Hey, my name's Maddie, and welcome to Beer in Beautiful Places. Normally, we go on adventures to new states, do some fun outdoor activity, and then finish with a local beer. In addition to showing my day to day, I also want to share how I'm doing all this. So, for this video, I thought I would explain my plans for winter. Not only changes in temperature, but also the amount of light in a day and dealing with bulky clothes and stuff in a small space. So let's get started. No, I could never be about for the winter is being cold. I am that person who is always cold no matter what. So living in a van, <laughs> that's gonna be a challenge. But I've thought a lot about this. If I am driving to a place before I go to sleep, as opposed to already being where I'm sleeping, I'm gonna use my car's heat that it already has to get it really, really warm back here before I arrive. Then when I do, automatically when I get there my window covers go up to trap that heat because I think that is gonna be I think the windows are probably the space that are gonna let the heat in and out the most so first things first window covers on next step I have a blackout curtain that when I bought it it said it would help with insulation and it attaches to velcro and hooks so that there is like a wall of curtain right here blocking off my the driver's seat and the, the front part of my van and the living space and I think that's gonna help because that way the heat is more contained you know the smaller space the better also when I'm getting ready to go to bed I do have a really nice sleeping bag that is rated, rated to 30 degrees and it's supposed to be taken camping so I really think it's gonna help me out. So far on my trip I've had a few cold nights. It's not been consistently every night but still I've had plenty. If I want it a little warmer I put my sleeping bag on top of my covers but if I want it really really warm I am inside my sleeping bag with the covers over me. That's my plan for car specific tips, but there's also all kinds of camping and outdoor cold weather facts I've learned over the years, like always have your head and your feet and your hands covered, um, not just your main body, but your extremities too. You know, keep moving as much as you can, fill up a water bottle with hot water and put it in your bed come to think of it last year I made a video with everything I knew about how to hike in the cold so if you're looking for more specific tips like that that's your video I'll link it on your screen I think another challenge about winter is going to be how much light there is in a day I have been in Maine and Vermont and New Hampshire recently and it's been getting dark at about six so I've been cooking eating and washing dishes in the dark which Sucks because I can't see anything. Plus, you know, washing dishes, your hands get wet. And that's been not fun being in the cold. So my plan is to invest in a headlamp. Um, or just something better for lighting outdoors. I could wash dishes in here because I have a jug of water and a basin. But I'm worried if, <laughs> if it spills, that'll be really, really gross to clean up dishwasher. Dish water from my bed or something but i am really lucky because i have really good lights in here i found these string lights for ten dollars online and before that i was using this lamp which was good for you know just hanging out nice ambiance but with these lights it actually feels like you're hanging out in a room inside you know you can write read look for stuff so that has definitely been an upgrade I am very thankful for. I'm also trying to think about when I do certain things like um, taking showers when it's light outside so it's warmer and 
I'm also thinking about how I can schedule my day that would make more sense with the daylight. So taking showers in the day, not at night when it's colder and and a few times I've saved the dishes for washing in the morning so I can I can be doing it in the light. Next, let's talk about organizing all that bulky gear. So I have two trap doors that lift up and I've already pushed all my swimsuits, uh, towels, sundresses, like summer stuff underneath this part that doesn't lift up because I probably won't need it for a while. And then in this part, I have put a lot of warm stuff in easy reach. So if I need it during the night or I just don't feel like moving this, I can just grab that. And it's it's been easier. Another way I've started to organize my stuff differently is Usually I have my sleeping bag on this seat, but because it's on my bed now, I have been using this to store my pile of clothes. I find myself changing a lot during the day. Like today I'm wearing shorts and t-shirt. Like a few days ago I was wearing, I was bundled up throughout the day. So you just never really know. So I've been using this to keep the clothes that are not dirty enough that they need to go in the hamper, but also not clean enough that they need to go away with the rest of the clothes. I'm also scheduling where I'm gonna be when based on the weather. Really the only way I'm gonna know if this all works out is the test of time. I'll definitely be updating you all. If you subscribe, I'll definitely be updating you on how it's going. If all of this stuff doesn't work, plan B is to get a propane heater. I'm having propane in the car and it seems a little something I'm not super comfortable with, but I know other people do. So, hey, they haven't died yet, right? <laughs> also, if worse comes to worse, my plan is find somewhere in find a building to live in for a few months. But that is plan Z. If nothing else works, that's when I'll move into a building. But for right now, I am loving my life on the road. And I hope some of you all will join me and stay on this adventure with me to see how these tips turn out. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day.